Welcome to Jesus Changes Everything, a daily podcast dedicated to providing a fresh look at the ancient and glorious truth that Jesus not only reigns, but is busy about the business of bringing all things under subjection, that celebrates the wonder and the glory that he has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Before there was iTunes or streaming, before there was CDs, before there was cassettes, for me anyway, before there were albums, there were 45s. Uh, When I was a kid growing up, I had a little portable carry-around record player. It wasn't the same sturdy one they used to have at the schools, uh, but it was a portable one. And I got records from time to time. I would go down to the GC Murphy store in Ligonier and flip through the 45s and uh, collect some of them. And I had my favorites uh, that I liked a lot. But most of my taking in of music happened via the radio. And the big top 40 radio station, when I started listening in the city of Pittsburgh, that's where we got most of our uh, television and radio from, Pittsburgh, uh, was WPEZ. WPEZ, which I think was 94.5 or 94.3 on the dial, uh, was top 40 station uh, that uh, played the music that I was listening to when I was in uh, late grade school and, and uh, I guess, early middle school or early junior high. Uh, I developed a taste for more album-oriented rock pretty young because I had an older sibling uh, that sort of pushed me in that direction. But uh, in the 70s, uh, th- there was uh, just quite a variety of um different styles of music that you would hear on uh, Top 40 radio. But what I wanted to mention today is sort of a uh, further outgrowth of something we talked about last time on That 70s Kid, uh, the proliferation of uh, kung fu through various and sundry uh, media. And one of those mediums uh, was the... uh, uh, when that uh, song, Everyone Was Kung Fu Fighting, and I called it a novelty song. And I mentioned, boy, there were a lot of novelty songs back in the 70s. They don't do that so much anymore. And not only were there novelty songs, but on the top 40 stations, it wasn't that unusual uh, for them to do little comedy bits uh, off of comedy albums. Uh, you could hear a little Cheech and Chong thing or uh, uh, even a, a, a Steve Martin stand-up deal. Uh, now, some, of course, had both uh, stand-up and novelty songs. It's, uh, one of the big hits of the 70s was Steve Martin's song, King Tut. Uh, but there were so many of them. And the king of these was Ray Stevens, who did The Streak. Uh, he was a little bit more of a country uh, uh, kind of cat. Uh, and this might have been late 60s when uh, Monster Mash came out. Um, but uh, there was Disco Duck. There was Convoy. Uh, I'm not sure how many more I can I can think of. But there were more. And, and it was like, I don't know, just like a little taste of, in the 70s, a little taste of going back into the 40s in the sense that the radio wasn't just for music. But in the 70s, that's really all it was. There there might be on the AM dial uh, a news station in town. And for Pittsburgh, that would be KDKA, which was the first uh, commercial radio station in the country. Um, And they would have talk shows uh, at night and uh, a little bit more extended kind of news program in the morning uh, with Jack Bogut. Um, But on the FM dial, you were pretty much reduced down. All all there was on the FM dial were uh, uh, NPR or public radio way down at the left side of the dial. There was um, top 40 stations. There was uh, album rock stations. There was maybe a couple country stations. And then a slew of easy listening. And by easy listening, I don't mean 
uh, Olivia Newton-John, I mean Muzak. Uh, you know, some guy on a saxophone playing uh, a light, airy version of, I don't know, Stairway to Heaven. I mean, it's just weird. Uh, elevator music, and that, that was it for the FM. And there weren't uh, uh, sort of national... Uh, talk show guys like uh, sort of Rush Limbaugh uh, became, but that's what we would listen to, and we and, and we would talk about. I mean, there was sort of uh, uh, like they talk about water cooler television. There was water cooler music. Hey, did you hear this new thing, or did you? And uh, and oftentimes again, these novelty songs would be connected to uh, some sort of weird cultural uh, habit, like. Like the streak, uh, streaking became a thing, be- and the song be- happened because of the streaking, not the other way around. Convoy became a thing because of uh, not so much trucking, but because of the popularity of CB radios for uh, a brief season. And then, uh, what was the other one? Um, not Monster Mash, but oh, Disco Duck, of course, was uh, big because disco became big. So. Uh, there was just, again, a lot of variety, a lot of different kinds of uh, things that you could hear. Uh, oh, gosh, Basketball Jones. Remember Basketball Jones? <laughs> oh, mercy. Uh, or even, I don't know if I'd call it a novelty song, but you could hear uh, some nun that used to sing the Lord's Prayer uh, all the time on the radio. So just all sorts of variety, uh, even though... In, as the top 40 station, generally speaking, uh, their playlist was pretty slim. Uh, anyway, that's not another memory for me from the 70s. I'd love to hear uh, any, maybe any of the uh, novelty songs that I missed or uh, any other strange things you might have heard or any of the comedy routines that you might have heard on the radio. Let us hear from you. Hello, RCJR. Hello, RCJR at gmail.com. Thanks so much. Though I didn't think such was possible, my esteem for both my father and the Bible took a rather sudden spike. I was blessed to be sitting in a seminary class while he stood teaching. He mentioned, almost in passing, this notion that rocked my world. Some scholars, he said, and by the way he said it, I had a strong suspicion that he was one of those scholars. Some scholars believe that the man Joshua met outside the wall of Jericho was a pre-incarnate manifestation of the second person of the Trinity, a Christophany. I was blown away as he went on to make the case. He encouraged us to remember that Joshua bowed and worshipped. Had that man been but a mere angel from God, the angel would have forbidden such worship. That the being received the worship made the case. That the Father would send the Son further sanctify this already holy moment as Joshua prepares for the first battle for the promised land. Better still, however, was the conversation itself. Joshua, you will remember, has only recently replaced Moses as the leader of God's people. The wandering in the wilderness has come to an end. The Jordan has been crossed. And now, between God's people and the land, stands Jericho and its impenetrable walls. Wouldn't you be frightened? Confused? Would you not feel the weight of every brick in that wall on your own back as you take up the mantle of leadership? In the midst of this turmoil, Joshua finds himself facing a man. Joshua neither rashly attacks nor shrinks back. Instead, he asks what seems to us an utterly fitting question. Are you for us or for our adversaries? God the Son has not come, however, merely to honor the occasion. Nearly, neither rather, was his goal merely to bring the victory. 
he came instead to sanctify his son, to give Joshua the right perspective. To Joshua's either or, God the Son replies, no. Just as Jesus would befuddle the Pharisees as they sought to trap him with their questions, here he befuddles us. No. What does that mean? He continues, But as the commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. He explains to Joshua this most fundamental truth. The question, Joshua, is not whether or not I am on your side or theirs. The question is whether or not you are on my side. Whether at war or at peace, in want or in plenty, whatever our circumstances, this is the same question we all face each day. Indeed, when Jesus spoke from the mount, he made much the same point. He did so because we, like Joshua, need to learn the same point. Like Joshua before us, we look at our obstacles and fear and confusion. Will we be able to win this struggle at work? Will we be able to tame this challenge in our homes? Will we be able to overcome this obstacle in our church? And in our prayer lives, as we meet with our Father through God the Son, we ask, sometimes in hope, other times in despair, if he is with us, if he will come to our aid and win the battle for us, and in his grace and terrible sovereign power and authority, he tells us, no. God is not a witness to history, choosing sides and cheering his favorites on. God is Lord of history, moving history forward as what it is, his story. God's grace to us isn't that he sides with us, but that he has put enmity in our hearts against the serpent and his seed. God's grace isn't that he fights for us, but that he, by the power of the Holy Spirit, gives us life so that we might fight for him. When Jesus tells us to stop worrying about what we'll eat and what we'll wear, reminding us that the Gentiles worry about such things, he naturally reasons in the same manner. His message isn't, oh, don't sweat it. God is for you. He'll come to your aid to make sure you get what you want. God is on your side. Instead, the command is not to worry about these things, our own interests and agendas, because we're called to passionately pursue the interests and agenda of the kingdom of God. He tells us, no, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The truth, the wisdom, the word, he does not change and neither does his message to us. What he spoke to Joshua, he speaks to us. Christ speaks the same message in both the Old and New Testaments because he's speaking to the same people, those who by faith are his. That he is the captain of the army of the Lord is grace to Joshua and grace to us because by the same grace we are made soldiers in that army. That same grace in turn is what ensures the victory. He is our captain. He, not Joshua, brings down the walls of Jericho. He, not Joshua, brings his people into the land of promise. He, not Joshua, storms the very gate of hell. He, not Joshua, takes captivity cap captive. He, not Joshua, is Lord of lords and King of kings. And we, because he li loves us, march in the victory parade with him. You've been listening to the Jesus Changes Everything podcast, a production of Dunamis Fellowship, the teaching outreach of Dr. R.C. Sproul Jr. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we encourage you to subscribe, which you can do at all the usual outlets, to tell your friends, and to spread the word. To learn more about the work of Dunamis Fellowship, please visit rcsprouljr.com. And join us next time on Jesus Changes Everything.